XCPNG version 8.0 has now been out for a couple weeks and we've been updating systems to it, including this system by Tech Supply Direct. They supplied this to us uh, to do some videos on and we have an offer code to get you 10% off your purchase if you'd like to purchase this server or one just like it, maybe not my server, but you can buy my server, everything's for sale. You just gotta want it more than I do. Anyways, uh, if you are looking for 10% off on there, I have an offer code below along with some other affiliate links to get you some deals on all kinds of different tech goodies. Also, if you can take a second to click the like button, that would be great. It does help our algorithm driven lives. Back to the content here. So XCPNG version eight. So unlike the seven series of XCPNG, and if you didn't know, this is what the console looks like. I've launched it through the iDRAC system so you can see directly what it uh, looks like. They changed from the blue theme to the red theme. Of course, that's the mo probably the most minor piece of errata in terms of updates, but I still think it's really cool. I do like the new look. I'm a big fan of the color red. Anyways, so this is running on that Dell PowerEdge R720 XD. I'll leave a link to that server, like I did a review and overview of the server. And it'll be the one I'm doing a lot of future videos on for XCPNG, including some pasture stuff. But let's talk a little bit about this release. So the official release date was July 25th, and they have a lot of details on all the fun things. But the one thing I want to talk about right away, the new kernel installer runs the same kernel as XCPNG 8.0. So booting the installer ISO is a good way to make sure your hardware is still recognized by the new kernel. Secondly, the YUM style upgrade does not offer backamp your system. So at this stage, it's far too risky for a major upgrade. And I bring that up. They have detailed upgrade steps on their wiki, but in short, you're going to have to download the ISO to a thumb drive or whichever your choice is if you still have a CD or however you're installing it. And you'll have to do that in order to upgrade over the top of 7.6. Now, the good news is, like they said, the ISO you download uh, when you put to a thumb drive is going to run the same kernel. So if you have a problem with your hardware, you will know because it won't boot. Uh, if it all boots up fine, great. Go ahead and run the installer and it will install over the top of the 7 series and then you'll be on the 8 series and it'll preserve all your VMs and everything else. But please back up everything beforehand because well, you're still going from a major version upgrade. So major changes since the release candidate is pretty simple. Uh, the alternative kernel option was added. They have all the MDS security problems with the, you know, uh, branch prediction and everything else that people, some security researchers did a video on this. I had found some problems with some of the Intel processors. And if you didn't watch or didn't read through the release candidate one, we'll talk about some of the other things that are really important in there is one, they added a lot of utilities, which is pretty awesome. They updated the EMU manager and a whole lot of much better design around ZFS. So ZFS pool detection, they've made this really easy to do. Uh, so when you create a ZFS pool, I'm going to log in over here. Uh, I did Z pool status. I, you still have to create it all from the command line as far as you create, do like the Z pool create command. You still run through that to create it. But once you create it, you just go over to Zen Orchestra, which you have pulled up here, and it will detect and add the storage repositories really easily because it can say, hey, look, I see a ZFS pool. So when you select the storage type as ZFS, it can see the pools you created. So it's actually become a lot easier to do. You don't have to remember exactly like what, where the root of the pool is and try to mount it. It'll do it right through the Zen Orchestra once you create the pool. So first you create the pool with the disk, then from there, Zen Orchestra can recognize the pool as you create it. Now, all the pool management for ZFS is still going to be managed from the command line. So uh, if you ever have a drive go bad or you need to swap something out or make changes to the ZFS pool, that's also going to be run uh, from the command line. But as far as using it as a storage pool, easy enough. You can go right here, create new storage repository, and we'll go over here to storages. And here's the ZFS RAID Z pool with some disks set up on there. And it's actually transferring another run over to it right now. So if you look at the tasks, it's copying over from the other servers. I'm moving more things over to our lab server to get ready for some more videos. But so far, we haven't had any problems with version 8. Uh, works really well. And the other cool thing that is in here, in uh, so it's on the final list here, is all these tools that they've added too. So others can be installed depending on your needs, but they've now got DSTAT, iPerf, iPerf3, IOTOP. So you can just do yum install IOTOP. Already has the latest version. 
And now you can have tools like IOTOP to make life easier to say, oh, cool, we can see how fast we're writing data back and forth to the drives and see what's going on. These are really just a whole lot of different diagnostic tools, especially iPerf is an important one because I've used that in a lot of my demos to talk about speed of things. So being able to quickly install all these is wonderful. And Tmux. So if you're not familiar with Tmux, I can't run it twice. Well, actually, I had to run it like this. So exit. You don't want to run nested Tmux. I'm already running Tmux. So now I can uh, root at 172.16.69.25. Uh, there we go. Clear. Oh. Yum. Install Tmux. Yes, download packages. Now I can run Tmux on here. And if you're not familiar with Tmux, they had screen built in before, uh, but Tmux allows you to be able to do things like run, whoops, IO top here. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, HTOP over here. So you can see all the processor usage and then you can see the IO usage at the bottom. This is really handy having Tmux in there to quickly split the screens. I'm glad they added this uh, right in natively. That is huge because if you're ever doing any diagnostics or when I'm doing some of this testing for the demo videos I have coming up, you want to be able to uh, try to troubleshoot or look at things that are going on when you're putting different workloads on there. And well, Tmux just is a big time saver. I probably should do a whole video just on Tmux, uh, but in the short term, I actually learned Tmux from my friend Jay over on Learn Linux TV. So if you type in Learn Linux TV Tmux, or and I can leave the link below, uh, he's got some great tutorials on Tmux. Now, the other thing you may have noticed is they did update the command line, uh, so it doesn't have the kind of boring look. They made this shell look a little bit nicer, so that's definitely a nice feature as well. And the other things that are added in here is the XOSDN controller. Now, I have not dived real deep into this, but this is pretty exciting. Uh, what it allows you to do, and it's easy to do on a single server, which is create a private network. So you can actually create all kinds of virtualized private networks. Wonderful for lab testing. So you can create virtual machines that can only talk to each other that on a network that does not you know, physically exist in the real world. It is only virtual. It's also a way to keep things contained if you're doing any type of virus research or anything like that. But let's go a step further. They're integrating a full SDN controller to pass this between GRE tunnels between different servers. So it's gonna have support for both uh, GRE and I believe uh, XVLAN. And it's essentially how Open vSwitch work, but it's gonna be natively integrated right into the whole Zen Orchestra part. So it's a Zen Orchestra working in combination with XEPNG to create an entire SDN, so software-defined networking controller that will be uh, integrated so you can have two physical servers or more, two or more servers that have private networking encapsulation between them. This is a, just like I said, a really neat feature, especially when I'm going to be in my lab videos. Uh, I'm hoping to do some testing with this later. It's going to be a pretty advanced video to set this up because there's some trickery uh, that I have not just take the time to read yet about how to set up GRE tunnels and how that works, like how they're implementing it with. Uh, what about the future? because this is a question people had. The private networks created by the STN controller are isolated, but the network could also be ciphered with IPsec because by default, GRE is an encapsulation, but not an encryption. So it does offer very fast connections between there, but no encryption. So if you were doing it anything more than own pr your own private network between them, people would be able to tap into the traffic. So they are looking at in the future using IPsec, but you would have to right now provide external encapsulation, encapsulation to get this going, uh, just an FYI. But uh, that's it for now on XCP and 8. Like I said, I'm excited. There's been so much progress uh, with XCPNG that the platform's been amazing. I run it for our stack here at the office and we've now had a lot of clients using it. Uh, we also have been doing a lot of consulting with people uh, who have been using it. So it's definitely a solid project. Yes, it's completely used in a lot of commercial companies now. Um, and you can also get support right from the folks over at XCPNG. They're obviously super knowledgeable because they wrote it. Uh, so if you're worried about, you know, how can you get support? What if uh, Tom is the only one who supports it? No, no, no. These guys have excellent support. Uh, they sell entire support contracts for it. We usually just help people uh, with some of the implementation or some of the basic setup of it, but you can buy fully pro support from the people over at XCPNG and they made it easy. XCP-NG.com is where you buy the full support for them. 
And it is wonderful because it's hundred percent open source. There are no licenses, nothing, anyone can use this, which is awesome. So if you're a home lab builder and you're looking for a fully open source stack, this is still uh, my go-to recommendation because of the scalability of it. It's a pretty outstanding project. All right, and thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.